Hey yo, it's a talk show host, Kana Lassiter. Join me for an episode of Relations, the most lit, lit hour of adult conversation. Hold up, hold up. You know you can't forget about me. It's 51 Spade, Alpha Male G O D, one half of Relations. You wanna hear the truth? Can, can, can you can you can you handle the truth? It's where is that, baby? It's where is that, baby? What's good? Welcome to an all new episode of Relations. My name is Kana Lassiter. Say it with me now. Alpha male G O D 51 Spade, aka the ninja you love to hate. I'm in the building. You know how we do it, guys. We have two topics, one hour. Our first topic tonight will be coming from the woman's handbook. And our second topic is the submissive woman versus the modern woman and the difference between the two. Let's talk about this woman's handbook. I can get in a particular argument or have a particular opinion about something or how the way it should go or how we should operate. And my significant other always says, there you go choosing from that motherfucking woman's handbook. That shit is bullshit. I'm on the fence about it. So I'm going to build an example of something we would choose from a woman's handbook that obviously was passed down to us and how maybe depending on your dynamic, that thing out of the handbook wouldn't work. We're going to talk about something as simple as men should take out the trash, change the oil on the car, pump gas, and the woman should cook clean and shut the fuck up. Got to throw that in there. Um, So a woman has to stay in a woman's place. So one day, Me, my partner, and my mother were in the same room. I began to tie up the trash can to take the trash out. And my mom stopped me and says, why are you doing that? That's his job. And that is from, she taught me that. So she was reminding me that as an adult, like you shouldn't be taking out the trash. Your man should be doing that. And for a moment, I thought to myself, she's right. She's always taught me that. I know gender roles. Men take out the trash. I cook. I get where she was coming from. What came into play at that point is I'm a submissive woman. I want the trash taken and out. I know my my partner will do that with no problem. The issue was I wanted the trash taken out right then because I was cooking at the time and I just don't like overflowing trash. So at that point, I thought that rule out of her handbook doesn't apply because I shouldn't ever say, can you take out the trash can right now? I don't think any woman that's listening to this podcast who is submissive would even use that type of dialogue with her significant other. Not that I can't ask my partner to take the trash out. In fact, I have, but I've asked and left it alone and let him do it on his own time. By the end of the night, the trash is gone. But if I want something done right there in the moment, I'm not going to ask. I'm just going to do. And that's where I'm at the gray area because the basic lesson is a man wears the pants A woman wears the skirt. That's the basic thing that she's trying to pass down. She's just using it in a tangible example of you don't take out the trash. And so I get her basic training. I get the handbook. I get the lesson that's in the handbook. I just think that it's circumstantial. And sometimes the woman needs to take out the trash. So there's that gray area for me. That's cool. I ain't talking about that. See, the handbook I'm talking about is the handbook of bullshit that y'all all all accumulate on. The handbook that when shit is going wrong in y'all relationship, the handbook that each and every single one of y'all have to discuss men, what they should be doing, how y'all don't answer questions, like that handbook. Not the cliff notes, the whole handbook that ends y'all in a heap of trouble. See, the problem is, See, when something goes on in y'all relationship, how you just giving that scenario right there. So I'll paint a picture too. Something going wrong in the relationship. Instead of talking to your significant other, you, your homegirl, and hope your other homegirl pull out these handbooks. And then y'all read for the same book of bullshit, as I, as, as I tend to call it. Because y'all think that handbook works on every man. Then you start giving advice on... Uh, well, what you should do, and this is what I'm talking about, what you should do 
in that handbook. Because somewhere in there, there's a what you should do, girl. And then y'all all read from it. And I ain't, I ain't never seen a woman successful from this handbook yet. Mm-hmm. So, I'll go a little deeper. I had a scenario where some one of my homeboys started messing with a with a female. She didn't want to mess with how she put it. She didn't want to mess with a man who had kids. He got two kids. She also said that she didn't want no no babies. She got and, pregnant. Ended up getting pregnant. <laughs> you, you you already know where I'm going with this. Right. And because she decided to settle, <clears throat> then she starts coming up with shit out of y'all handbook. Well, I had a child from him. I'm with him. I should be able to move in. That's definitely <laughs> out of the handbook. Now. With good reason. No, no good reason. Because where the good no reason come from is because you decided to settle and lower your standards instead of sticking to what should be in your handbook you start putting in shit that don't even apply to my homeboy you didn't want someone with kids he got two you didn't want to have no baby why is you fucking wrong why you having sex wrong why you not on birth control there's other things that can happen before you get to this so just because you have a child does not mean you move in with me and ultimatums and things like this tends to come out of these handbooks. Because even with that being said, we got another homeboy. And they friends. They are literally friends. And they reading from the same book of bullshit. She's giving ultimatums. He need to move in with me at this date. This is the handbook I'm talking about. Of why y'all reading from it. And it ain't working. Because guess where they both at? Single as a dollar bill. And I get that. Let, I, it, I understand that we gave two different examples, but I wanted to use something simple out of the handbook that's kind of universal as me saying, like you said, the things that are in the handbook technically should be in there. Our mothers that passed down that handbook, I don't think they had malintent. I think they were basing... You giving an interview with gum in your mouth? Sorry. <laughs> I think they were basing their, uh, they put the things in the handbook based off one, their experience and and B, what their parents taught them. So let's say that first. I understand that you're saying that the handbook is bullshit, but the handbook is also necessary. When you're growing up, when you're sitting in a dress, you keep your legs closed. You don't sit with your legs open. There are things in this handbook that, are vital to us as young girls. So I don't want to say that the book is totally wrong. I just think this, I agree with you. We choose to go back to that handbook when shit has gone awry. When she, we should be sticking to the handbook no matter what. We try to go off script to make adjustments or settle to our situation. We make adjustments to that handbook based on who we're with. And you can't automatically say that's wrong. That's why I gave the example of taking out the trash. If I was with a beta dude or a weaker man and I believe that a woman should never take out the trash, then my dialogue with him is going to be, babe, can you take out the trash right now because I'm cooking? It's that I'm in a different dynamic. I have an alpha male. So there's no such thing as can you stop what you're doing and take out the trash? Mm -hmm. I just have to say, can you take out the trash and Mm -hmm. trust that if he says he's going to take it out, he's going to take it out. That's cool. But to debunk that whole theory is, here we go. So your mama passed down you this handbook, right? <laughs> Why you, you said it like that? So your mama passed down. I mean, that's how you said it. You know what I'm saying? Your mama passed it down. Now it was different. Like, ain't no goddamn different. Your mama passed you down this handbook, right? And she's reading from the same handbook. See, the problem with that is this, what you just said. And I say this day in and day out. Situational. Everything is situational. Mm-hmm. So when y'all all in cahoots reading from this book, the thing about that is like, you like sports, right? Yes. Like like football? Yes. Okay. You think they all have the same handbook? No. Why? Because of the players. They, they all have play to, the same. It's the teams. They got a scheme different. 
for the yeah. different teams. That's why the plays are audibles. You understand what I'm saying? Certain teams will zero in, on, offense, zero, zero in on quarterback. Someone yeah. might zero in on a, on, on a cornerback, running back, whatever. So this is where shit goes ballistic for women. Yeah. It's like y'all read from the same handbook but ain't calling no audibles, no plays, no nothing. Y'all just sticking to the script. Not even the Bible has changed <laughs> how shit is looked at. <laughs> it's been a, it's been a redition, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But for some reason, y'all don't do that. You see what I'm saying? Now, your mama passes it down to you. She might have a beta. You might have an alpha. So that's why those plays are totally different. Mm-hmm. And even men know when we go in our handbook, nope. That play ain't gonna work on her. Okay. <laughs> well, that ain't gonna work. Yeah, and, I get it. And that's what I'm saying right there. Like men have the same handbook, but we also see them cliff notes. You know what I'm saying? This will work if A, B, and C work. Now, if E come into play, <laughs> you might need to do this one. Okay. And that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, what is all in y'all handbook that's fucked up? Because y'all all reading the same shit, and then y'all coming out the same way, and every man is seeing it and like, what's wrong with her? You know what I'm saying? Like, we can't even get it because every time it happens, men are looking like the same chick just tried the same shit. That shit didn't work then, like all and it ain't gonna work now. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out like, at what point in time? Like, I just brought up sports. I, I want to be a champion. I want to win. Don't you want to win? Yeah, I want to win. Then change the handbook. That's what I'm saying. Like, it got to be some shit in there that y'all not ripping out pages. Y'all keeping the book still intact, and y'all ain't changing shit. And it starts with conversation. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of times, the person you mad with, y'all read from this handbook, and then y'all have a meeting of the minds. And then y'all all reading from the same playbook. And that play is not winning y'all games. Yeah. And then we're watching it time in and time out. Watching you fail. <laughs> no. <laughs> a big dog. Y'all read y'all all read from the same y'all read from the same playbook and then y'all be losing. Like y'all be losing the game. It's not like y'all winning the game. Y'all are actually losing the games. And I'm just like, why would you constantly want to do that? I just gave an example of two of my homeboys that got two of their homegirls that's reading from the same book, but both of them lost. The end result was they lost. Yeah. Both of them gave ultimatums reading from this handbook, but both of them ended up with no man. And now both of them are upset with no man and unhappy and probably angry and probably looking like what just happened. What happened was y'all reading from the same damn handbook with no No audibles in there. No, you know what? This ain't working, girl. I think we need to alter this. You know why? Because first, consider the source that the handbook came from. You know, there are only a small percentage of women who are willing to admit that their mother wasn't the best example. Most of us who can say, hey, my mom wasn't perfect, but that would be my statement going in to talk about how my mom raised me and what she passed on. My mom wasn't perfect, but... She was a decent person. And so if you're dealing with somebody who you believe is decent, who you look up to, when they hand you that handbook, word is bond. What's in that book works because of the person who gave it to me. Let's not take that away from women who had a very active mother like my mom. My mom was a stay-at-home mom who sold Tupperware. She participated in my life. I had Santa Claus at my birthday parties because I was born in December. I mean, she went above and beyond for me. So if she hands me a book, Mm -hmm. even though she's had two past marriages, now she's in her third one. I get it. Cause I feel like that's where you were going to go. You know, our parents might be divorced. That's why I say they are imperfect. They may have been divorced, had to start over whatever, but you can't take away that sense of that's my mama Mm -hmm. from women. You never are going to be able to. Unless you can come to a place where you can have an intelligent conversation about the mistakes they made and erase that shit that they told you about that particular situation and replace that with better stuff in your handbook. Other than that, I don't want to take away from where that handbook came from. I feel like 
a good example of that would be a player. Like, let's say a lot of, probably Tom Brady is a bad example. But the relationship that Brady and Belichick have is unmatched. Mm -hmm. That boy played ball when he was under Belichick. And you know what? He went somewhere else and still was able to play good ball. But we still have to compare the time period. He just got to Tampa Bay. We know for sure when he was with Belichick, he had years of success. We don't know whether... It's the relationship with this coach at Tampa Bay, or is it just the Florida weather that he was able to remain Tom Brady? You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I don't feel like Tom Brady got to Tampa and took his handbook and just threw it away. Mm -hmm. I believe that he still checks on what Belichick taught him mm -hmm. because that's a smart person. Mm -hmm. So I think women have the right to say, yeah, I have a handbook and all of it ain't correct because I'm on a different team now, but I'm also not going to put this under my mattress and never look at it again. That doesn't make much sense. Yeah, not, Consider not the person you. that gives it to you. Yeah, but I'm not telling you to. But even so, this is a big thing. So I'm glad that you brought it up that way. You, you, without even setting me up, you set me up. So I like to thank you for actually doing this. I'm gonna show y'all a little something about women. You know what I'm saying? And that their strategies and how they should unfold. And it just doesn't. She don't even know she set it up. But I'm gonna show y'all something. Well, watch me, <laughs> watch me work. You know what I'm saying? For four years, and I watched this play out day in and day out. You watch it play out in movies, TV shows, all kind of shit. You got Big Mama in the house. Big Mama is law. To your grandkids, kids, this and that, grandma did this and did that. She ain't did no wrong. Whatever Big Mama said, Big Mama's right. Mm -hmm. Grandpa, Paul, Dad, whatever this and that, he ain't shit. Never was shit, couldn't be shit, grew up gonna be shit. You gonna be not shit like your great great granddaddy <laughs> and his daddy after him and this and that. See, it ain't the same rules when it come to men. The shit be wrong. Now you gave the example, of, hey, because my mama handed me this handbook, yeah. it came down. Yeah. Now I ain't never met a person that I met, they hand me a handbook. Hey Spade, this is how you lose weight. You can lose weight by Looking at this handbook, and I'm going to get the handbook, and it could probably be from my dad. And I'm going to get the handbook, and I'm going to say, nigga, what do you know about losing weight? You've been 300 pounds my whole <laughs> life, and you handed me a book about losing weight. When I know for a fucking fact you can't do it, but you handed me this book. Now, I'm not saying none of this shit in here don't work, yeah. but what I'm saying is just because the person handed me this book does not make me look at them and say, well, it's because it's my dad, you know what I'm saying? This shit got to be right. And this is where women get this shit foggy at. Because for you to sit here and say, well, my mama was in three marriages. It's some failure going on. And that's where we go at. One failed marriage. Two failed marriage. Going into three. And we don't even know how that's working. But my point being is just because it's handed from your mom does not mean that everything in that shit is right. I love my mom to death. Nobody can't touch my mama. But my mom ain't no goddamn angel. You know what I'm saying? My mom made mistakes like anybody else. So even with that being said, we'll take your Tom Brady scenario. He got the book, but he still was able to take pages with that shit. Let me take some of these pages that me and Belichick worked on, and I can take them shits right down to Tampa Bay. See, the problem is that's someone that's intellectual to say Tampa Bay going to have a playbook, but we had a playbook that worked successful too. Some of y'all shit work so we can, you know, integrate some of this shit together. Mm -hmm. But that's what women don't do. Because you get the handbook from your mama and just read that shit verbatim and think everything in that shit is verbatim and it's law and it's not. Because the thing with that is everything evolves. It does, but I want you to understand the handbook is mostly based off what we call principle. Everybody in here can understand your mother saying, hey, you shouldn't take out the trash. You shouldn't be changing a tire. You shouldn't be changing the oil. Everybody here can understand that. Mm -hmm. And everybody can also understand that <clears throat> things are circumstantial. Mm -hmm. You might be on the side of the road by yourself. Gotcha. So you need to learn how to change a tire. Gotcha. And let me show you something about principle. See, when big when when Big Daddy or your pa cheated, he just cheated. He was a piece of shit. See, when your grandma cheated, she was living life. She was out here exploring. 
Ain't nobody have like no fucking excuse of calling her a bitch or a hoe or any of this type of shit going on. That's Big Mama, so she ain't going to be disrespected. It's no law. We don't hold even on, know Big on, Mama on, cheated. Uh, uh, That's the difference. Yes. Well, we know Grandpa <clears throat> cheated because he got kids from other oh, bitches. Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> we do know that because we, like, those movies that you talking about where the mama's like, really, I'm not your auntie. I'm really your mama. So let's start with the let's start with that handbook that you reading out of a bunch of lies and bullshit. Because the reason you got your head down is is because now you saying, oh yeah, that's right. I forgot. That is true. I forgot about that <laughs> motherfucker that got got caught cheating. I ain't talking about speculations and shit like that. I'm talking about real deal caught. And those don't get the same shit as a man because when granddad did it and he's trying to explain to his son or his grandson why he couldn't be with his child or be there for him it was the mama that was blocking all that shit and does she catch the shit that comes from it comes along with that no she expects to get patted on the back and was like well i was protecting you your dad wasn't a piece of shit let me find out my dad ain't a piece of shit you don't need to block me from some shit because he did shit to you mm -hmm. me and you are two totally different people what he did to you and what he might be do to me might be the same, but let me experience that. And if you was to flip that shit around, the man would never, he would catch hell from it from beginning to end, from keeping you from his mama. It, the results would not be the same. There's no way that no one could tell me that because I've watched it play out. Because when the man has the child, it's like, damn, you're keeping away from their mama? Like, that shit is like, that's it's unheard cruel. of. It sounds cruel, even with you saying That's right. But let that shit be in reverse. Well, his daddy ain't shit, so I'm just keeping him. They, and y'all go along with that shit like it's it's pumpkin pie at the table. It ain't nothing else like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all having tea and crumpets and shit like that. Like, it's like it's just normal shit. Like, nothing is wrong with it. I, let me tell you something. I, I, the only example I can really give is this. I love God. I love bread. Like, <laughs> I did say that kind of like Oprah would have. Um... I have a great relationship with my savior, but there are some things in the book that I'm kind of like, I don't know, but it's still the book. You don't degrade the book. You don't disrespect the book. And you certainly don't disrespect the person that wrote the book, made the book in the book. So that's why the handbook is going to be where the handbook is. It's going to be, you're going to, you're going to appreciate it and respect it for what it is, just like you appreciate and respect the Bible. Even though you're out sinning and doing stuff and you don't agree with everything is in the Bible, I'm never going to walk in your house and see that Bible on the floor. I'm never going to see you rolling, uh, taking the pages out and rolling weed with it. I'm, you're going to treat that book a certain way, though you might be the biggest sinner in the world, that book is sacred. It's no different with the handbook that women get from their mothers. It's no different. The person that, for, that wrote it is... That person you look up to and love and adore and would never disrespect knowingly. And the book that they gave you is protected and is sanctified and it's kept in a place. And you're always going to go back to it. <clears throat> right or wrong, this is the relationship we have with that book. And the only way I could bring that full circle is comparing it to the Bible. I don't care what type of heathen you are. You're probably not going to pick up a Bible and do malice to it. And you think a certain way about the Bible, even though you don't obey none of the Ten Commandments. Maybe out of two out of ten, you even obey or abide by. But there's something about that book that makes you feel whole, special, connected. That is why the woman's handbook is so important. It makes us feel whole, special, connected. Something we can always go back to just for basic principle. Not for let's just do it, but for basic pr principle. God is love. He also says that we should not steal, but I don't want to pay for that pack of bubble gum. That doesn't mean that I'm going to go home and rip that page out of the Bible because I decided to steal. God still says thou shalt not steal. And it still says God in love or God is love and all the great things. So because it says all those other great things, I have to keep the handbook, even though I'm not obeying or following everything in the handbook. It's still sacred. You understand what I'm saying? Oh yeah, I totally do. You set me up again. I like how you do. I like how you. I like how. You, I like how you doing this. I like how you doing this tonight. Um, so I'm gonna approach this from this standpoint, okay? And I'm I'm actually glad that you went that route. The handbook that you're talking about, I totally get where you're coming from. Um, you know about Malcolm X, right? Yes. Okay. 
He was a Muslim, right? Yes. Okay. Read from the book of Allah. Correct. But with him read with him reading from the with him reading from the book of Allah, one thing that you have to keep in mind is this. Because he read from one book, his mind was not fully open. And once he got out and experienced the world, his mind was able to see different Muslims, not just the Muslims that was taught by Elijah. And I'm speaking from this because even though I was given the Bible as a kid and I read it, it wasn't until I went to jail where I got to see other religions. And then I can see other religions and read about other religions and see that it ain't just one religion that's actually going on. And you have to keep that in mind when you're talking about the handbook that y'all have. It's all, it's, it's, it's all good that you have a handbook that you can read from. But just because someone gave it to you does not make it law. And that's the problem was going on with women. Y'all reading from one book and thinking that everything is what it say it is. Like things evolve. Things change. So I get it. When your mom hand you this handbook, I'm not telling you to throw this shit away. But what I'm telling you is that shit got to be revised. And also, at some point in time, like, I'm not taking away from anybody because I don't really like to talk about religion, but I've read from the book of Allah and read from the book of Quran, Buddhism, uh, uh, Scientology, and stuff like that. And all of those are different. And even if I take a little bit of pieces of this, that, and whatever, it can still center me to get to some places, but it also teaches me not to look at one thing and say, one directional thinking works because if you living in a world like that and you're talking about relationships how you think the world that you live in you're gonna nine times out of ten be losing in a bunch of shit because i just gave two examples of two women with one way thinking that possibly couldn't think that the outcome could have been my relationship is going to be dead and both of their shit is dead but with some outside thinking it might have not had to be that you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. so if you're going to read from the book, I get it. I'm not saying because your mama gave it to you that it had to be that. But just because my dad gave shit to me, and especially like a man's handbook, which he did, there were certain things in that handbook I knew just wouldn't work. You know what I'm saying? Because either the time or the time that I'm in. Now, there are some things that are still law, but everything didn't work that way. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem with women a lot of times. Like, y'all reading it verbatim and just not changing anything to it. But the shit is crazy. It's like, the results are the same. That's the problem I would be looking at. Mm -hmm. No one is saying, we're not getting the results we want. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Um, It would be kind of, I don't want to call women stupid, but it's very hard for me to believe that a woman wouldn't look at her handbook, just for basic training, the basic ABCs that your mom taught you and make adjustments to that book. I just can't believe that, the, you know, based on who you're in a relationship with, the rules in that handbook do change. So, and, and I just can't see women saying, because okay. my mama told me this, I got to do this. Gotcha. I don't see that. Gotcha. So explain to me the rationale between the example that I just gave. So you got two women that want two men to move in with them. So that means they reading from the same handbook. Now, I'm going to take a wild jump on a branch and say... They commiserated with each other. They commiserating with each other and saying, girl, you need to do this. Have him move in for this day. You know what you should do? You should do this, this, and that. Well, they kind of similar, mm -hmm. so this should be the result, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if that's the result, and y'all both say the same shit, mm -hmm. now, somebody's ship going to start getting rocky, before the other person. Or maybe Rocky at the same time. You never know. But both of their results was going the same way. Mm -hmm. And you just said the key thing. I don't think like no woman can look in this handbook and at some point in time. Not make say, adjustments. Not make adjustments. So you explain to me how you see two women giving two ultimatums. Reading from the same fucking handbook. And both of their results was the same. No man. This is why I said the handbook is based on principle. No man could sit here in front of me and say, if 
you have my baby, that doesn't necessarily mean marriage. Are you fucking kidding me? You can. Of course, my handbook says if you are having uh, relations with this person unprotected mm -hmm. and you're letting him nut in you, mm -hmm. then y'all are at a certain level where marriage should certainly be the fucking conversation on the table. Mm -hmm. No one is going to look at a handbook and be like, well, I think that rule sucks. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. So I, that's why I'm... Ooh. It, it should make sense to everybody fucking saying, involved. You keep saying the word should. You don't want a child, right? Now, now, now Stevie wanted to concede this shit, so I'm going to paint this shit. I'm going to so paint this, this, I'm gonna paint this shit in braille. No, because you keep saying, like, this doesn't look right. So, I'm going to tell you what don't look right. I have a set standard. I don't want to mess with a man that got kids. He got two kids. I don't want to have a baby, but you have an unprotected sex. Now, that's a lot of ways to get around this shit. It's condoms, <laughs> birth control. I hate to say it because I don't believe in it. Abortion. But some kind of way you like, well, let me carry through with this plan and have his child. Because this, because this leads down to marriage. Now, I don't know who you've been talking to. Maybe it's in the handbook. It is. <laughs> and that's why I keep telling you this handbook is fucked up and y'all need to throw this shit out the window. For some strange reason... I'm leading back to communication because he don't owe her anything. He never said that he was going to marry her. He never said that she could move in with him. I get that, but it's okay for her to have that expectation. Are you serious? I'm not saying that you don't have the expectation, but what I'm saying is your handbook need to be altered. You understand what I'm saying? No, it doesn't. So, so, you just so, need to stick to the handbook. Okay, if he ain't willing you, to marry you, then don't get fucking pregnant. That's right. That's in the handbook. That's right. And cool. it should be in the handbook. It should be. And I bet you that it is. But the results that's going on right now is she threw everything out the, out the window that was in the handbook for some other shit. That is, I call delusion. Because just because someone has a child from you does not equate marriage. It doesn't. I understand that it doesn't. The question is, should it? No, it's, that's not the question. How? I, how could you even say that? So, like, listen, mar marriage before children is definitely in the handbook. Okay. Whether okay, it's, stop right whether that's your so, circumstances so, or so not, right that's there. in the fucking handbook. Gotcha. Now, stop right there. Say what you just said. Marriage before children? Yeah. Now, how much of that is going on? It's not. Exactly. But it's still in the handbook. So gotcha. that's why the expectation is so there. So that's why I'm telling you throw the handbook out. No. Because it's not working for y'all. So you're telling me instead of sticking to the handbook, I should throw the fucking handbook away. I don't see you telling your daughter that. I tell my daughter exactly what I'm supposed to tell her about the bullshit that goes on that y'all reading from the handbook that's passed down from her mama. So when she's reading shit out of the handbook that her mama is giving her, I'm the one telling her that is a bunch of fucking bullshit because what it used to be was she don't want me to see who she dating because her mama going to accept whoever it is that she dating, not the daddy. The daddy can see through bullshit. You can't bullshit a bullshitter. You can't game a gamer. That's why the daughter don't want to bring them to their fucking dad because we see through the shit that your mom going to be like, I fell for the exact same shit after you had the child. Not telling her before it happened. So that's why I'm saying the handbook that you're getting, and I'll even take this, I'll even take it this route. You don't even have to throw it away. But that shit got to be altered. Because last I checked, I don't I don't want to lose at anything. Not life, not a game. I, I'm a champion. I win, I'm good at everything that I do. So for you to tell me it's okay taking an L and, 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 and pass that down to your kids, you're crazy. I don't think that the handbook is embodies taking an L. I well, think that, that's it, what's happening. I think based on the person that handed it to you, it's based on decency. It's based on quality of life. And just remember, it's based on the experienced person's quality of life. They know that if you get married before you have children, you're going to have a different quality of life than you're going to have with a baby daddy. If you go to college out of high school, you're going to have a different quality of life than someone who doesn't. And even though we know people had have, have, have been our millionaires today that don't have a college degree, we know that. I'm just saying it, the handbook is based off principle. 
principle wise, you're going to tell your kids to go to school. But you know in your heart that you don't have to go to school to be a millionaire. There are a million things to do. But you have to pick the greater or the lesser of two evils. Mm-hmm. You tell your child to just freestyle it and hope they be a millionaire. Or you set them up for to, for success the way you know it to be. Mm-hmm. So in your handbook, it's not going to say freestyle. Mm-hmm. Your handbook is going to say college. But in your conversation, you might say, I know the handbook says college. Mm-hmm. But Based on your circumstance, you had a baby early, whatever the the situation is, Mm -hmm. you might be able to write off course, but you still have the right to send that child out into the world with basic principles. Mm -hmm. And that's what that handbook is. The basic Mm -hmm. principle is marriage before babies, Mm -hmm. college before career. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And I'm not disagreeing with you. What I'm saying to you is you using those principles and then y'all not altering shit and putting y'all in fucked up scenarios. So just like you said, Tom Brady was in, in in New England. I'll bet my bottom dollar. I'll probably bet my left neck that he took some of that shit and took it with him. And this is the same shit that I'm telling you that I sit down with my daughter. I ain't tell her to throw this shit away. I'm just saying, what does your mama know about a man? Nothing. And what am I? I'm a man. So, so why don't you start a so, handbook? So we have a hand. We but, have a handbook. But do you give have, that handbook to we, your daughter? We, we have a no, handbook. because it's your not, the handbook not, is based the, on. It's not for the men. Games. Men, <laughs> men, men hand handbooks down to their boys. Right. Women hand handbooks down to their women. So that so you're trying to change the narrative, trying to flip a script. No, we're not going to flip no script in here. Not today. What's gonna happen is because your handbook fucked up. Don't be trying to talk about invent something new. You know what I'm saying? Because you've been busted. No, we gonna stick to what we talking about. Why your handbook fucked up, <laughs> not mine. I'm just saying, since you have all the answers, I didn't say I had. But all the, the problem answers. is, the I man's didn't... handbook is based off how do we win, mm-hmm. which got a lot of chess plays in it, a lot of backdooring in it, a lot of lying, a lot of just getting by in it. The woman's handbook has basic <laughs> principles of life. Are you winning? <laughs> I have to be. <laughs> we back. We back. We Let me back. shake we that back. shit off. We back. I don't do that more often. They caught you on live, so it's all good. So Listen, this ain't even on camera. I can't even cut this. It's not about whether we're, <laughs> whether we're winning or losing. The point is the principle. You have to listen. Look, okay. I heard you arguing about something particular the other day. You said they took cursive out of schools. You believe in your heart that cursive, being able to sign your name, is a basic fucking essential. You don't agree with it being taken out of schools. I don't agree with certain things like marriage before children, going to college before career, should be taken out the handbook. Mm -hmm. Should it be adjusted based on your circumstance? Duh. Mm -hmm. But this handbook is vital to little girls. Just the basic stuff. Why is it not being being adjusted, though? That's the question. Because I never, because some I never stuff said, is not adjustable. If you, that's not adjustable. Let me tell you why it's not adjustable. Especially because we brought up the situation of you have a girl that has set her standards. I don't want to have a baby. I don't want to have kids. She's put herself in a situation where she got pregnant and she's dating a guy with children. Some two things she says she didn't want to have anything to do with. Okay, mm-hmm. so the fact that. She is now asking, hey, I want to move in. Mm -hmm. I want to get married. Mm -hmm. I don't think she's wrong because it's based on principle. And the reason why it's based on principle is how can you look at me Mm -hmm. and trust me Mm -hmm. and say you love me to raise your flesh and fucking blood, but you don't want to give me your last name. Mm -hmm. You don't want to spend time uh, us together in one space. Mm That is a problem. That's hurtful. I'm not saying that every man should want to marry you. She didn't ask. She didn't get all that straightened out before time. That's her bad. Mm -hmm. But I cannot take away her feeling that, Mm -hmm. damn, I wasn't able to succeed Mm -hmm. with what was in my handbook. Mm -hmm. That's hurtful. And it's depressing, Mm -hmm. stressful, Mm -hmm. all those things. I totally get what she's going through. Mm -hmm. And but should she have settled? No, I totally agree. She did not have to make that choice. But saying that she shouldn't 
be referring back to her handbook and that she should change the handbook or she shouldn't even bitch about the shit that's in the handbook that she wasn't able to six to accomplish. No, I didn't say I'm, that. Well, okay. That's how I took it. Okay. Yeah, because I'm, I'm not proud when, since I said how my relationship is with Christ or how I feel about the Bible, I'm not proud that I'm not abiding by the book. Mm -hmm. I'm not proud of that at all. So if I fall off, of course, I'm going to say, damn, I didn't obey the book. I didn't go back to my basic principles. Mm -hmm. So I get why she but feels you know the what, way she feels. But you know what would make you feel better? It's like what I just said earlier, though. If you read even from if you read even from the book of Christ, there's other books out here that you can implement in your movement going forward. So just like I said, I didn't know anything about that. So if I'm just moving off the word of the good book, mm -hmm. then I get locked up. Mm -hmm. And then I have Muslims approach me and say, hey, look, look from the book of Allah, the book of Quran. And I read in there. There's certain things that's in there that is like the Bible, but not necessarily. Mm -hmm. There are some movements in there that say, damn, I don't have to really move like that. Mm -hmm. I can make this little adjustment. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is I didn't say throw it away. I didn't say she uh, that. You have an attitude about her having that expectation, though, I feel like. No. I feel like there's smoke coming no. off of you when you say she got the nerve to be questioning him now about why he's not marrying her and why she's not no. moving in. No, no. What I what I have, what I got smoked by, and, I, and, I, and, and I, I, I take all the smoke. What I have smoke about is ultimatums. See, you can ask for what you want. This is America, Jack. <laughs> you can ask for whatever it is that you want. You know what I'm saying? We're in the land of the free. You can ask for whatever you want. But you can't get mad at him because he said, no, that's what I got a problem with. Because if it was flip fucking around and it was her, just like that Me Too movement that you talking about, her body, her choice. When she say no, it mean no. But when the man say no, it's bullshit and it ain't taken seriously. That's what the part. That's what I got a problem with. Because when men say no, they don't want to do some shit. We fucked up individuals. So that brings me back to that. Yeah, you fucked up individuals brings, because you guys brings, make adjustments that alter our fucking lives. Being a mom no, or not going no, to college is a big fucking deal. No, you just altered no, your whole fucking no, future. What no, the fuck are you talking no, about? No. So in that handbook that your mama gave you, that means that some shit that your mama didn't equip you with, just like it can be not equipped for my dad, they didn't give you. So... Not picking the right man. So, I'm going I'm to I'm bring this full circle. We watch different podcasts and shit like this. I watch a woman on another podcast say her best friend of seven years, seven years, they were friends before they got in a relationship. And she said the key thing to that was I got to know who he was as a person. And her problem is what she got going on with women today is y'all don't get to know the individuals. Y'all sit there and put all these expectations on motherfuckers y'all don't know. And y'all sit there and do that dumb shit. And then sit there and want to complain when the shit don't put don't turn out in your favor. Yeah, so on. if I if I go into meet a woman and she ends up being a hoe, and then I find out six down nine a month and run into one of her homegirl, you ain't know she was stripping at the sugar shack? How you don't know that? And that's the same shit that I say to women when that shit happens. You ain't find out what his goals are in life. You don't know what his goals are in life. You just know that I'm finna go get some dick. Now, that whole thing transpired, and then a oops or oh oh happened, and now you want to say, well, shit, that oops or oh oh happened, so we might as well just go full throttle. And then you upset because he don't want to go full throttle because he like, I got a different mission that I'm trying to do. And you are not finna bully me into some so shit. So now we're bullies? <laughs> Seriously? We're, are you, I can't even believe you just used that word. I used it. You're not finna, you're not finna bully us into shit. Because, because this is the thing that you were just saying a few minutes ago. You had no problem when you were saying, my mama saying to her husband, pick up and take that trash now. But if that shit was in reverse, you got like seven of your friends around and I say, hey, Go wash them dishes now. See, all your friends in are going to be like, <laughs> who he talking to like that? That's what's going to happen in there. You see what I'm saying? 
Nah, it, I could be just exaggerating. I don't know. I'm coming up with this shit out the top of my head and shit. You know what I'm saying? But I'm quite sure that this ain't a scene from a movie. I'm quite sure it would go like that. But you sat there with no problem saying, what well, my mama said, hey, what your man doing? He need to go pick up that trash because men don't take. Men need to be taking trash out, not the woman. And you sat there and was like trying to make adjustments then. You know what I'm saying? Which I'm not taking away from your adjustments. That's mm -hmm. cool that you made them. But the same adjustments that you're trying to make right then and there, that's what I'm talking about about y'all playbook. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't make those adjustments a lot of time when y'all in scenarios. So that's why that shit happened to both of their ass. Because they reading from the same book of bullshit, which is y'all handbook, and it ain't being adjusted. I didn't have a problem with my daughter getting a handbook. I'm telling her shit in that handbook that your mama gave you. That shit ain't right. Because it doesn't always play out Thank you. the way the handbook has Thank it you. play out. But Thank you know you. what? You don't always get the job after four years of college either, but you still take your ass there. That's right. And you understand me? Gotcha. And some people don't take their ass to college to get rich. Because just like you said, motherfuckers say, hey, money don't make you happy. And them the same motherfuckers that ain't got it. But they abiding by that damn handbook. You know what I'm saying? So I met plenty of people in church that sit there and say, hallelujah. But I say hallelujah with a bag full of money. Is it time to switch topics yet? You can roll. I can't. <laughs> I just can't. We have to bring this topic back because, I like, it. I need I need some time. Gotcha. Because you're totally wrong. Nah, okay. I just don't have, like... So I said it's like a bunch of... What you say? It's a bunch of W's in there? It's a bunch of W's in there. Listen, we're going to have to revisit this handbook because you have to understand. I don't think you got the whole... I got it. The circumference of me comparing the mother's handbook to the Bible. Yeah, you, They're the same. Yeah, you don't have that subject wrapped right. You don't have it wrapped right. Let's be clear. So now we're going to switch to the submissive woman versus the modern woman and the difference between the two. For me, I'm both. I, I And I would never say that. On every show that we've done for years... I have always said I'm submissive, but it's just some shit I'm not going to submit to. Especially that shit you talking about about my handbook. Okay. I know that. You winning? Yes. No. I am winning. It's lies. You <laughs> tell yourself. Lies. I am winning. I feel like every... Swash, check on there and see if she winning. See what they say. According to the audience, probably not, because most of them are like you. <laughs> okay. But according to my life, I'm winning. Okay. 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 I ain't gonna take away from your life. Go ahead. You know, I I ha I have Never what I you, need. What makes you feel good? Go ahead. Ride out. I am gonna ride out. Right. So we're gonna talk about the difference between the submissive woman and the modern woman. And obviously, I'm sure this audience probably doesn't believe I'm a very, very, very submissive woman. But there are some things about me that are modern, and that's that I speak the fuck up. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm sitting in this chair. I believe in submission <laughs> to a certain fucking degree. Okay? I am not the gum on somebody's fucking bottom of their feet. Mm -hmm. I refuse to be that. Mm -hmm. That got had me in a very abusive relationship. Okay. I was not this vocal in that relationship. Mm -hmm. But that was because the very first time I was vocal, mm -hmm. I ended up choked out. So that kept me from being vocal for the entire relationship. That tends to happen. Oh yeah. And I'm not and I and I don't take anything away from that. So this is where I go with that. The debate a lot of times with submissive women and modern women is this. The word submission. When when people hear the word submission, they naturally go to weak. So a lot of times when you ask women are they a submissive woman? They'll say, I'm submissive for the right person. <laughs> now, my thing is, you're either submissive no, or you're not. not. <laughs> this is not a light switch. I ran into this, this woman. She said she's submissive. And I told her, what's the word I'm looking for here? She is, give me, give me a different scenario of submission. Uh, um, for women, a different word than, uh, name. other than submissive, agreeable. No, 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 no. I mean, cooperative, cooperative? people pleaser. No. Uh, what's the what's the what's what's the what's the the opposite of chauvinistic? 
Um, the opposite of being a chauvinist is being... I don't think there's a word opposite chauvinist. Exactly. <laughs> and that's the problem for women right there. Because y'all don't have the word. That, you have, did, 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 did you notice that when I said the word chauvinist, it's one for a man? Yes. Yeah. Is it opposite for, for a woman that's that? No. Exactly. Except for the fact that she has an ego. I mean, I think that would be the closest. No, y'all y'all say that's independence. Yeah. That's what y'all start saying. Y'all yeah. start saying shit like I'm independent, yeah. I'm strong, yeah. I'm woman, hear me roar, yeah. and I say to that, you're an adult. And those are all positive words. Gotcha. And chauvinist is a negative word. Exactly. So, so when a man steps up for himself for believing what he believes in, it's just men, just a man, he's wrong. And for women, it's I'm woman. Hear me roar. I'm strong. I'm all this shit. And when we go into this place, it's hard to tell a woman or other women, a group of women, girl, you should be submissive. My lady gave me something, something to drink. She'll go to the kitchen, get the ice, the whole nine, bring it back to me. About three of her friends would be like, something wrong with his feet? Why he can't go get that shit? Mm -hmm. But if it's her and she's parched, I can go get the ice. Get the cup, pour it in there, this and that, bring it back. They'll be like, he's so sweet and shit like that. And it's not the same for men a lot of times. So it's cool when the shit is in reverse. What happens a lot of times is we have like one directional fucking way of thinking. You know what I'm saying? Especially when it comes to women. It's like, he should do this, be submissive to you. He should, you know, all that shit is um, um, gentleman-like. Yeah, speak you know, chivalrous. Yeah, chivalrous and shit like that. And then when it comes to women, and the woman is doing something nice for the man, do you have to really do that? Like, you being a little extra. He can mm -hmm. do that shit itself. Mm -hmm. He can go get his plate itself. He can go fix his plate itself. Like, the whole shit is not even the same. And this is where a lot of these modern women come in into play. Mm -hmm. Now, y'all want traditional shit. You want to get married, have kids, all this type of shit. And I had, and remember I said when I first started off, I was talking to a woman and she think that she's a submissive woman and want all this shit and was getting married and told the man, you can marry me. I don't cook though. <laughs> and the very first fucking thing out of my head was, you think you a submissive woman? And I'm trying to figure out where she had the strength to even look at me <laughs> with a straight face and said, he can marry me. And he will sacrifice. Home cooked meals. For Home the cooked his meals. Life. The ring. Walk you down the aisle. Giving you the happiest day of your life. And he can't even get a hot plate from your ass. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about right here. This is the type of shit I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? It's because women don't don't, you know, they think that word submissive like submissive. <laughs> You know, they start getting allergies and shit. Like, you start saying shit like that. <laughs> what saying? I get it. And that's definitely not a submissive woman. I think that that's why we wanted to cover the modern woman versus submissive woman and the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. You really, you, I get it. You're either submissive or you're not. And if you're not willing to make those three meals a day or you know, honor the, the needs and wants of your king, then you're certainly not submissive. And I wouldn't even put myself in the submissive category if you have decided that you're not going to cook dinner. Now, what I will say is this. Modern women are a little different because their bank accounts make up for not being able to cook. And what I mean by that is they get freshly delivered. They have a chef come in. They have their meals delivered. So they have things in place that they think makes up it might not be for the man uh, he would rather have a home-cooked meal and see his wife in there you know whipping them plates whipping them pots mm -hmm. so i get that but the modern woman is now saying hey i don't need to have to learn how to cook i got enough money in the bank where i can have fucking meals delivered and all i gotta do is take it out of the thing and put it on the plate and have it there when he gets home gotcha. so let's not misconstrue now what the modern women ha have put in place 
of standing over the stove. I can't be mad at that. As a matter of fact, I have a friend that's wealthy and she says she doesn't like to cook and she doesn't like to do things with the kids. I told her, I was like, girl, you got enough money in the bank to hire a nanny and a chef. No big deal. That's right. And you can buy that dick and buy that man and buy whatever it is that you need. Since you don't need it so much, that's the type of energy that you got. I want you to keep that exact same energy because that's what, because that's what I'm about right there. See, like, I'm not mad at the simple fact at you being an independent, quote unquote, adult woman. You know what I'm saying? I ain't mad at that simple fact right there. But the shit that's crazy about that type, those type of things is this is what come into play. And this is what y'all are not taught. You can't have everything. In y'all mind, y'all think y'all can have everything. But you can't have everything. Even a man can't have everything. Even as a man, and I'm a black man, and I'm a very smart black man. I know that there's certain limitations. Now, there's boundaries I can break, but there's still things that I'm like, I can't break past that boundary. But with women, it's like you can break every boundary known to mankind. I'm talking about modern women, too. You know what I'm saying? You can break everything. Now, if you want to be that, if you want to be that, at the end of the day, I'm saying be that. You see what I'm saying? You don't need a man if you don't want a man, just like I would tell a man, uh, you don't need a woman if you don't need a woman. Like a lot of times when 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 women a lot of times think that they are in need. I was raised by my mama. But my mama taught me not to want or need a woman for anything. I can cook, I can clean, I can do my own laundry. Like I don't need a woman for anything. And I and in my situation, I would be what is in reverse what a woman would be saying. I just need a man for a net. And then I would be saying the same shit. I just need a woman for a net. You see what I'm saying? So I'm not mad at what they saying as far as that. Where the problem comes into play is they want to do all this shit. Go through they go through their young years, 19, 20, 25, 30, and this and that, and then they turn 40. And all of a sudden, then you want a man. You didn't you didn't you didn't you didn't did all this this background work and got the house. You know what I'm saying? Got the Cadillac and shit like that with no one to share it with. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm independent woman. Hear me roar, right? You know what I'm saying? And when Thanksgiving roll around and you ain't got nobody to cook for and, th- and, 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 and Christmas come around and you looking for that man, you got your cat, your dog, and your alligator. That's all I'm saying. So keep that same energy is what I'm talking about. You don't need me. Don't need me. Keep it. I get what you're saying, and it's funny as fuck. I get it. I get it, okay? But let's not forget, we've all seen times change. And we went from the burning bed era where we were watching Farrah Fawcett on TV getting our ass whooped, trying to raise kids, trying to prepare meals, and being treated like a dog. Mm -hmm. That's where these fucking handbooks are created from. That's where these narratives are created from. That's where this whole thing of being submissive is going towards being submissive to the right person. That's why you have that rebuttal. I could be submissive to the right man. It's based on our fucking experience. I've always been submissive, but I'm now just in the relationship where I'm supposed to be submissive. Mm -hmm. Because the prior relationships, I had no business being submissive. Mm -hmm. They didn't deserve my fucking submission. And I got fucked up behind it. I I got taken advantage of, Mm -hmm. money, Mm -hmm. getting my ass whooped, all that shit. Me being a a submissive person to my core got me fucked up. Mm -hmm. It's only years later that I'm in the relationship that I'm supposed to be submissive in. Mm -hmm. You understand that? I do. So you can't send a person out in the world with this notion that they need to be a submissive person by character. You can't. You have to choose your submission based on them, your mate. But I wouldn't tell I wouldn't tell anybody that. So if you are a submissive woman, the very first thing that I would say is some of the things in two parent households, there's certain things that, that come into play. I had like a conversation not too long ago with my dad. My dad was like, you know, I, I feel like um, I wasn't like a good father figure for you. Like, I wasn't that, you know, play catch type of dad with you. And I was like, he wasn't. You know what I'm saying? He was like, but I didn't, I didn't, I feel like I didn't teach you things as a man. And I'm like, nah, that's where you're wrong. His energy is a male made me see what a man was. There, when you are a parent, there are things that kids pay attention to that you do not know that they're paying attention to. My mom, which who was an attractive woman, 
their Christmas parties, their those type of things that go on, and he ain't always right there. He's somewhere nearby, but ain't there. But I got to see how he handled men who tried to hit on my mom. In confrontations, I also see saw how he handled men. There were even times when he took me to like McDonald's or something like that and made me order my food. He was like, if you don't order your food, if you don't verbally speak out your mouth, go up to the counter and say what it is that you want, you ain't eating tonight. Now, that's something that a mom might not do. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If she, if your baby say, but mom, I just, well, can't you just do it for me? They will. And then they go order the food for them and, this, and think that nothing's wrong with that. Mm-hmm. So the handbook that, you, that, that you're talking about or just in, in generalization saying me being submissive, giving yourself to somebody ain't. Another thing that has to come into play is either your mama or your dad. Like what you was asking me about my daughter has to tell you things about that. Picking the right man and shit like that. Like the thing that you was upset about saying like, well, she can want that. She can. But you can't want it from the wrong person. See, that's the problem. Like when you're in an abusive relationship, especially in this world, it's wolves out here. And that's the very first thing that my dad taught me. Fair is not fair in this world. And it's wolves out here. You know what I'm saying? You want to be a sheep or you want to dish it out? There were kids in my school, and I went to a predominantly black school. It was all out warfare. I, I, I couldn't even imagine what the kids going through now because they have, like, school for me ended at three. School to them is, like, forever. And that's, and that's why the suicide rates are high. And people are bullying online. And this type of shit is going on because that shit don't stop. And if you're not equipping your kids for that type of shit, this is why they're killing themselves. This is why some of this pain is going on. This is why motherfuckers be needing therapy because they ain't equipped with the shit that go on. So as a submissive woman, I wouldn't tell you that being submissive is wrong, but in the wrong hands, it can be, you know what I'm saying? Like it can be because people will take that kindness and for weakness, for weakness. So that's why I'm arguing with you about women who are on the fence or, or using it as, yes, I can be submissive, but, and earlier in this conversation, you made a statement. Either you're submissive or you're not. And mm-hmm. I think that's a problem because... <clears throat> no, I think nothing's wrong with being submissive. You get what I'm saying? But giving your submissive, I don't think that you can turn it on, turn it off. Like, I still No, feel, you definitely like, can turn like, it on, like, turn it off. Well, no, no. What I'm saying to you is, like, just because, just because you were... Just because you was in an abusive relationship and you were submissive to the wrong person, did not mean that you not submissive just because you gave yourself to the wrong person. That's not an on and off switch. Mm-hmm. That is who you are. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that you can't run into the wrong person and then you just not submissive to him. You are that person. It's just that you recognize that he don't need that. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it would be the same thing with me. Like if someone say, well, shit, he's a blunt person. And most people be like, well, he's an asshole. But if you get to know me, I'm actually a nice person. Everybody don't deserve my energy. I don't need to be nice to everybody for what? You know what I'm saying? There's only certain people that deserve my energy. Not everyone. True. Well, we deserve everybody's energy for this portion of the show. It's tap in. And I think the tap in went to you. (laughs) You guys, if you don't know what tap in is, it's the opportunity for you to email us. You can ask us a question. Not only do we read your question on air, but we also answer it. So what is our tap in for the night? Oh, yes, you definitely love this one. I often get these things in my DM where women often ask questions about relationships and things like that. And I actually got like an email from a young, a young lady that's actually in a relationship, but she feels like she's not uh, monogamous. And even though she has a man, she wants to explore other things. And one of the key questions that she asks is, I'm not monogamous, but it's not that she want to sleep with a man. She wants to sleep with a woman and is questioning on how should she bring this up to her guy. Now, most, most, in most situations, some people, some people would think that it would go into a threesome, uh, uh, it would go into a threesome situation, but that's not what she's trying to do. She actually just wants the woman for herself. She doesn't want to share that woman with her dude. Mm-hmm. She wants it totally separate. Mm-hmm. So now she's asking, what does she do about that? 
Coming from someone who likes women, I've liked or been attracted to other women since college. Um, I was not able to say that out loud, not to myself, not to my family or my friends. So I definitely wasn't going to say it to somebody that I was dating. So I get her hesitation. At this age, it's easy for me to say, just have the conversation. But I can't say that without thinking back to my past and saying, why didn't I just have the conversation? So it is going to be based on her partner and how valuable that relationship is. Mm -hmm. Is her desire for women strong enough to, if she says it, the relationship's over, she's going to be all right and go do her thing with women? Mm -hmm. Or is it just something that she's curious about, she's not even sure, and it's not worth risking the relationship? I think that should be taught about or talked about. Mm -hmm. For me, I liked it enough that when I had the opportunity, but the opportunity had to present itself now, it had to be a perfect opportunity, let's say that. Mm -hmm. When I had the opportunity, I took it. Mm -hmm. The opportunity still had to come to me because I was afraid. The opportunity came to me because I was getting ready to get in a relationship with somebody and they said, they expressed to me that they were into that mm. type, the scenario where another woman might be involved. Mm. And for me, it was a relief. Really? That's it? Because I love women, but I've never been in a relationship that it was okay to love women. Mm. So I took that opportunity to say that. Had he not approached me in that way or opened the door to that opportunity, I don't know if I can honestly say I would be ready to just lay that out on the table. It's weird for it's weird for me. Very, very weird, especially if you found the guy that you think could potentially be your king, mm -hmm. great husband. All these things that we talked about earlier that a man might not expose his truths to a woman because he's afraid of loss. Mm -hmm. We have all those same fears. Mm -hmm. How is he going to look at me? How is he going to feel about me? Because I'm going to sleep with a woman now he thinks he might be able to. There are things that are playing out in our head about how this might turn out and sometimes it just doesn't add up to being worth it. Mm -hmm. So I don't have an answer. <laughs> I, I, don't, I really don't have an answer for her because it would be me saying something that I'm not true to because there was a time in my life that I wouldn't have ever said it to my mate. And then there was a time in my life where I had the opportunity to say it. So I feel like almost she needs to create an opportunity, maybe at the strip club. It just has to be the right time the and the right place. <laughs> there has to be, it has to be an opportunity for the conversation. Okay, okay, you don't okay. want things to go, things are going perfect. And then on Christmas days, by the way, I want some pussy. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. You can you got to be in the strip club and you got to, you got to, it's got to be something that makes him, he's relaxed and he's open to it because that's the scenario that we're in. Mm -hmm. If you're watching a big booty hole on stage and it's like, damn, babe, I got to tell you something because I cannot stop staring at her ass. By the way, I, I like women. I know that's new to you. I never told you before, but I thought this might be the right place, time to tell you. You understand? Because you're breaking the ice. He got ass to look at. Now the conversation is kind of comfortable. You have to pick the right time and place. That would be my advice. Hmm. That's, that's, that's interesting. Opportunity. Gotcha. Um, this is a this is a big and broad one. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna try to tackle this as, as quick as I as quick as I can. Um, for me, most people that be watching this show, you should are uh, most people already know that I'm poly, so I don't believe in monogamy anyway. Um, but the thing about monogamy, poly, um, exploring. Um, it comes with consequence um, a lot of times. And um, unfortunately, when you're dealing with people, you're also dealing with ego. Um, if you choose to explore, if she chooses to explore and take some of those things and put those things in her life, um, a lot of times they might go left. And reason being is, there are certain relationships, and I've seen relationships like this where you have like women who be with a man and the man can't please them. So that man will get a man for that woman that can please that woman. But every man ain't set up that way. Yeah. And then you have you have women who want to be with, with women like this scenario, but some men ain't set up that way either. There are some men that don't want threesomes. They don't want their woman with another woman. They look at that as competition. And this is when you're going to have to look at your mate and see, like, what is really, like, what's really what, what. Because it's not, I don't think that's, this is a, a simple answer. 
like even sometimes with that scenario that you're talking about going to the strip club, that's not really, that's not, that's not a good, uh, that's not a good scenario. You could be out of $250 or 300 bucks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like quick, like talking about an experiment that go left. You understand what I'm saying? And uh, it's not genuine because it's, uh, that's more of a, 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 you know, transaction. So, that conversation would need to be had. I would probably say filter it out just to see, you know, how your, your, your mate feels about it. Just given like scenarios, because we all been in, 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 in relationships where we be like, Hey babe, if it was me and another girl or, you know what I'm saying? Like just paint the scenario out and just see what he say or see what she say. And you'll get your answer right then and there. Like, but everybody isn't going to some, and, or sometimes you might find out some shit that, you know, he, he might be with it. You know, like you just don't know. So I would say filter, you know, filter it out, see how it go, and then take your next steps after that. You know, this isn't a, a definitive answer. So you you, you got to kind of filter your way through it. Yeah, you can find little tidbits right here on Relations. My name is Kana Lassiter, and you can find me on Twitter and IG at Kana Lassiter. And you can find your boy on both platforms. It's 51 Spade, Twitter and IG. I want to thank everybody for joining us on TikTok and Spark. If you're looking for the shirts that you want to get you one, you can go to my IG. It's Alpha Male God Creations. And if you're not finding them there, go to the website, www.alphamalegodcreations.com. And I'm about to sign out. You already know what I say because it's about that time. 